Hey everyone! So it's been a while since I've done a woodworking project and I've kind of been itching to do one. So today we're going to do a pretty simple one. For a while I've been wanting a behind the sofa table and I kept putting it off for a while because one of the elements that I wanted to go into the table was some sort of outlet because we have an outlet that goes behind the couch. So anytime we want to use it, we have to like move the couch and plug stuff in. We did put a power strip, but it's still like far enough behind there that we still have to like move the couch around, so it's kind of annoying. So I wanted to replace that with some sort of outlet that is connected to the table, if that makes sense. But like I said, I put it off for a while because I was just trying to do research on how the heck I would make it work. And then one day I realized that in offices they have tables and cubicles and whatnot that have plugs up on the desks. So I started looking for like conference table, like outlet plug things um, online and I found pretty much exactly what I needed. So I bought one and got all the wood that I needed and made the table. So today I'm going to show you how I made a behind the sofa table with easy access plugs so you can plug in whatever you need to plug in. Your laptop, your phone, whatever. Let's get started. My couch is about seven foot long so to make a table to fit that I used one one inch by eight inch by eight foot board, one one inch by eight inch by six foot board, three two inch by two inch by eight foot boards, a pocket hole jig with corresponding screws, a drill, a jigsaw, wood glue, an orbital sander, stain, t-shirt scraps, gloves, wood finish, and a desktop outlet hub. I'll leave an affiliate link to the one that I got in the description box below. So of course, if you guys want to make one of these for yourself, you'll need to adjust the measurements accordingly. I wanted my finished table to be 85 inches long and 28 inches high, so I cut my boards like so. I cut the 1 inch by 8 inch by 8 foot board down to 85 inches. I cut the 1 inch by 8 inch by 6 foot board down to 2 pieces measuring 27 and 1 fourth inch, and I cut the 2 inch by 2 inch by 8 foot boards down to 2 83 and 3 fourths inch pieces and 2 25 by 3 fourths inch pieces. If you're not familiar with working with wood, typically when you buy stuff at a home improvement store or something, even though the wood says it's 1 inch by 8 inches, it's actually something like 3 fourths of an inch by 7 and a half inches. Why is that? I'm not exactly sure. I think that I've heard that it has to do with the measurements of wood is before it's dried out, but if anybody knows why, then please let us know. Anyway, after cutting the wood, I used my pocket hole jig to drill two holes into one side of the smaller boards, and one on each end of the thin pieces. I also messed up and added pocket holes to the longest board and then later realized that they weren't needed. So if you're using a pocket hole jig, make sure you follow the directions for it. Normally, you have to adjust it for the size of wood that you're using, so it knows how far back the guide needs to sit before you drill the holes. Anyway, in the middle of the long wide piece, I needed to cut a hole for the outlet. You can use a hole saw for this, and when I was looking at buying these outlets online, people suggested the size of hole saw to get, but they're kind of expensive and I have a jigsaw and that would work just fine so I just used that. I traced the small end of the outlet and then I flipped it over and traced the larger end around the previous marking. This let me see how far I can go without making the hole too big. I drilled a hole using a bit that was big enough to fit the jigsaw blade, making sure to keep it on the inside of the markings that I made, and then I used a jigsaw to cut the hole out. Test fit to make sure the hole is the right size, and perfect. Using wood glue and the corresponding pocket hole screws, I started piecing everything together. I used a 1 and 1 inch screw to attach the side pieces onto the top piece. 
It would have been way easier if I clamped this down while doing this, but I don't have any clamps that are big enough for this, so I just chanced it. Then I attached the long, thin pieces at the bottom corners. I accidentally used the wrong screw for this, and it broke through and out the side. I was using 2 and 1 fourth inch screws when I should have been using just a straight up 2 inch screw. Whoops. The 2 and 1 fourth inch screws are going to be used to connect the 2 inch by 2 inch piece to another 2 inch by 2 inch piece. Thankfully, I only did this once, and I can hide that side against the wall. I stuck the last short thin pieces in place in the middle and glued and screwed them in. I actually had to move one of these over a few inches because it got in the way of my wall outlet. So you should probably double check that kind of stuff before you start putting your table together. Then I sanded over the whole thing with an orbital sander to make it nice and smooth and to touch up any of these edges that weren't lined up as perfectly as I would have liked because of my lack of clamps. Anyway, I wiped the dust off the table, put on some gloves, and then proceeded to stain it. When staining wood, rub the stain in the direction of the wood grain, making sure to wipe off any excess. Let dry according to the instructions, and then if you want it darker, you can apply another coat of stain. But I liked how it looked here, so I just finished it with a few coats of spray polyurethane. Then I let it dry overnight. Before putting it in place, the outlet had to go in. This thing is super easy to install. You just place it in the hole and then thread the bottom piece up. But make sure the wider side is facing up. I did this upside down initially. Twist the outlet so that it's aligned the way that you want it to be, and then screw it in place from the bottom. I believe I used 1 4 inch screws for this, or half inch. You just need to make sure that they're not going to break through the top. And then all I had to do was move the couch over, put it in place, and plug it in. Here's where I figured out that I made it just too long to fit nicely. When I was taking my measurements, I totally didn't even think about the baseboards and how much they would factor into the equation. They added like one or two whole inches. Though I guess it kind of worked out because the baseboard along the wall here wouldn't allow me to push the table flush against the wall anyway, which is what my original plan was. However, this side of the table was getting pushed to the wall whenever people sat on the couch and then the couch got pushed into the table. So I just shoved a scrap piece of 2x2 two two behind the table to keep it away from the wall. And that worked out okay enough. I might go back later and screw it in place just to hold it in place, but for now it seems fine. Anyway, all that's left is to style it however you'd like and then it's done. It's so nice to now actually have access to the plug that was behind the couch. enjoyed this week's project even though there are a few minor things wrong with it overall I'm extremely happy with how it turned out if you did like this video then please leave a like and if you want to see more then feel free to subscribe I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday you can follow me on Twitter Tumblr Instagram Pinterest snapchat and twitch and I'll leave the information to all of those down below 
Thank you to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you are interested in becoming a patron or learning about what Patreon is, then I'll leave a link to mine right here and you can go check it out. Every week I post a little behind the scenes kind of studio update and I just started a Discord for my patrons. So if you're a patron already and you didn't see this update, then go check it out. I'll link to the post that I made where I talk about it and you can join the server. If you're not a patron and that interests you and you want to become one, then it's up here or down there. You can go check it out. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you next week.